You're watching the Pick TV Network, Channel 1000. Welcome to The Importance and Power of Reading. I'm Michelle, the computer lady, your host. During some awful dark times in America, black people were denied the ability to read, to learn how to read, to write, or to even own books. And that has hampered our communities up until this day. Now we're going to have important conversations about the importance and power of reading. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm Michelle the Computer Lady. In today's segment of the importance of power of reading, I have the most amazing man, Kevin McLemore. He's an author, he also has a podcast, and he's the father of, I think, two sons. He has some incredible work a Christmas book called uh, Sprinkles, I believe, but we're going to discuss it further when I bring him on the broadcast. But let's discuss, parents, one thing, one thing that we should be thinking about, the power and the journey of reading. And in this power and journey of reading, there are seven pillars of reading that kids must learn. One reason we must, must make sure that they learn this is so they can focus, have great concentration, and they can understand what they're reading. And we're gonna get into that further. Without further ado, my guest. Good morning, Kevin. How are you? Good morning, Michelle. MC, how you doing? God, that was a great. great. I didn't know I had famous friends. Look at this. I'm not getting chills and stuff like that. So, all right. Thank you for the introduction. You're welcome. Now, Kevin. Tell everybody more about your podcast. Tell them a little bit about you and what you do. I, I'm actually the um, CEO and the co-founder of RMK Productions and the 10 United Podcast Network. We originally started um, the 10 United Podcast in order to get people that were on the entry level of podcasting to get all the right answers, get all the right instructions, and to set them up and produce a um, professional podcast. Um, my original podcast was talking with Kevin um, before it became Kevin and Son, and it was designed to um, um, help me market and promote my book. Um, George Floyd happened, um, the protest in the street, COVID ha happened, and I became very uh, active in the Philadelphia uh, area of trying to unite and get people together. So after a couple of radio uh, interviews, it became talking with Kevin and son. I brought my youngest son, Theo, on. I'm a father of four, two boys, two girls, Lakeisha, um, um, uh, Camille, Jillian, uh, Nicole, and um, Alex and Theo. And then I have uh, a son by choice, Connor, that I brought in. So it's 4.5. Um, so I brought that together. And um, one podcast led to another, I had two partners and uh, we had other podcasts. And so now the two that I host is talking with Kevin and son, and it's all about people you should know. We are the everyday person's champions. So people that are not showing up on Good Morning in America, or other uh, platforms like that, we allow people that are doing great things in the community to have their stories um, told and we support those people. So we're the, like unsung heroes. Every Sunday, we meet at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for motivational, quote, motivational Sundays with Kevin and friends. And uh, you can find us on our YouTube page. And we basically, um, based on interpretation and perspective, we talk about quotes we use every single day or quotes that have been created. I have over 300 that's created for the contents of my book and what they actually mean to people and how people are living with those quotes. So, um, you know, that's... Um, Pretty much um, what I do outside of being an author of four different books and award winning author, which you and I both share the same award, uh, Sprinkles, the True Spirit of Christmas. Um, and uh, that's how we became friends. So, all right. So enough said, because I can talk all day because that's what I like doing. <laughs> Kevin, thank you. Thank you. So now let everybody know where they can get your books at. Well, um, Sprinkles, the True Spirit of Christmas. Um, Independence, indispensable uh, games of X's and O's, how I learned everything about life, playing football, and my latest release, um, Dating with a Full Deck, all could be 
um, shipped to you on audio, Kindle, and um, hardcover and, and paperback through Amazon.com or anywhere that you have book sources. It could be on Apple. It could be on Google Books. It could be Barnes & Noble. If you Google my name, Kevin McLemore, three books will show up. I'm an author of four. Um, uh, Letters to Elvis was wrote in my uh, the full name, P.K. McLemore, which my actual given name is Sir Philip Kevin McLemore, but I go by Kevin. So, But Amazon.com is probably the best place to, um, to get the book. Great. So everybody, now you know where you can get his books. You see all the great work that he's doing. Now, Kevin, as we get into the meat of this conversation, as a kid, did you like reading or did you love reading? Um, the, the truth, I, I, I like learning. I don't know if reading was part of that learning process, um, but um, I, I don't I don't know. I struggle with reading. Um, as I mentioned in one of my books, I, I discovered as a, an adult after my daughter was di diagnosed with ADHD that I also suffered the same plight. I did not learn at the rate or the same level as most of my peers. And so life was hard when it came to education. It wasn't until the point that I was introduced um, going through a motivational um, um, concert or whatever the event was that um, I learned where my true purpose was or what I was doing. And that was in the eighth grade. And my first book that uh, I read was uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People after um, being at that speaking engagement. And the next book was Think and Grow Rich. And what happened was I started to um, connect with people that were great storytellers that had things that within the pages of their book that I can apply to my real life. And at that time, I didn't love reading, um, but I read. And that's the key thing is what with anything, you may not like exercising, but you need to exercise. And sooner or later, after you get in shape, you start to love exercise. And I think that's the way the mind works. The more that you read, the closer you fall in love with reading. And then you'll find authors or books <clears throat> that you just love reading. And then you you become a reader. Okay, so as a child, did you struggle with reading? How did that go? Um, with the, with with the child, and even up until almost graduated from high school, I mean college, I struggled with reading. Like I said, I had a learning disorder. Order. I almost graduated from college at Central State University without formally learning how to read and write. Even as a writer today, um, I struggle. But I embrace the struggle because I have, have happened to recognize my own gift. I'm a good storyteller. Um, I have two great editors that as far as punctuation and everything else. They don't write the books for me. They just make sure that they just make sure that I'm able to write a comprehensive conversation that is direct to the point. Because otherwise, you know, when I go through and I edit, you know, one sentence turns into two paragraphs and two paragraphs becomes another book. And I better have someone to put the brakes on because I have so much to tell. So um, struggle. Yes. Um, nor did I give up on myself? No, I found ways in order for me to be successful. And that's the key thing with anything in life. Um, when God takes away one sense for, for you, he enhances the sense of something, something else. And uh, it took me a while to realize what my my gifts were. But once I found found out what my gifts were, I kind of took full advantage of it. I exploited my own self. Well, that that's absolutely amazing. Now, on your reading journey, who would you say was your major influence to help you want to learn to read besides Dale Carnegie in that wonderful book that you mentioned? Well, thinking of grow, grow Rich, Dale Carnegie wasn't the person that inspired me to read. What inspired me to read was everything I learned about life. I learned playing high school football, my football coaches. OK, they stressed the power of education or going to the next level. They stressed the part uh, uh, throughout a book. You are able to travel and experience the things that you could not do physically. So um, it opened up my imagination. And that's what reading uh, basically does. It allows you to experience, share conversations, or um, or sit with like-minded people um, without actually having to be in the room or be in that location. Um, 
the words that's um, in a book um, is magical. If you allow the magic to happen and you believe that magical things can happen to you and you deserve it. And, um, and believe it or not, uh, reading strikes up great conversations because now in story, instead of you having words to say, you have words that's, that you say that have a purpose and a meaning behind it. That is absolutely correct. And I'm glad that you're bringing out that point. All right, Kevin, we've got to stop for a commercial break. We'll be right back. Every Since 1877, Jackson State University has been training students for a life of service and leadership to impact our global society. Ranked among the best HBCUs in the country, Jackson State University offers 47 undergraduate, 37 masters, one specialist, and 13 doctoral degree programs. Whether you're interested in the arts, education, public health, the sciences, or business, we're here to take you from ready to JSU ready. Visit jsums.edu and apply today. Thank you so much for joining us today on The Importance and Power of Reading, and welcome back. I have an amazing author, and he has his own podcast, Kevin and Son. Welcome back with me as we talk about The Importance and Power of Reading, Kevin McLemore. Good morning you, again, handsome. Thank you, you so much for joining me. Now, and, we talked about your struggles with reading and how you overcame them, and also some of your influencers, like your coach. So you started reading basically in eighth grade because not so much because you liked it, because you had something that was gearing you toward greatness. Is that correct? No, it's, it's not exactly correct. When, when I say struggle with reading, when you have um, a mental disorder and you don't understand it, um, you don't understand through looking in my eyes that when you look at the page, the words on a, on a page and all the words starts to um, uh, kind of blend together. You know, you see letters that are backwards when they should be forward. And you try to read and you, you try to understand where the punctuation uh, lies in there and what it said in conversation. In conversation, I can do it. But trying to read and still do this this very day. If, you know, when people ask me to read inserts for my book, I'd rather tell you about my book. I can quote exactly everything I've read in there. But reading from it, all of a sudden I, I build up anxiety because I want to get it right. I want to do it, you know, uh, enunciate every single word that, that that's out there. And then all of a sudden I get lost on the page. So um, I didn't know I was struggling with learning until I got to the point that I was almost graduated from college and, re and recognized myself that I had to make a change. And um, I've always loved learning. I've always loved being around uh, smart people. So I was influenced by my uncle, um, Bill, my cousin, Ronnie, and his wife, Betty. I was influenced by my, my coaches um, to strive to be better in every aspect of my life. I was in, you know, inspired to exercise my, my culture. I was inspired to, to live by my character and stand by my, my word. And I was inspired to, to, to put in a day's work for a day's pay. And no matter if the pay was emotional or financially, I, I showed up every single day. That is, that is so heartfelt. So, would you say that you were suffering from not only ADHD, but dys dyslexia? Well, I, I, I will say because when you don't know better, you, you, you do what, what, what you know. It wasn't until I was uh, in my 50s I was diagnosed, so I didn't know any better. And so it's just like growing up poor. Until you're around rich people and whatever, you don't know how poor you are until you have someone that's got a little bit more you more than you have. I just showed up every single day. And the fact that academically, I did well because I was able to articulate. Um, I was a good athlete and people gave me a break. Um, you know, I still today, if you gave me a test, uh, I freak out. And even though I know the answers, I'll get the answer wrong. But if you gave me an oral test, I will kill it. So, you know, using words like life was hard, life was struggles or whatever the case may be, is that I didn't know I was struggling. I didn't know that it was hard. I just knew I was different. And so in, in my life, in the same way when I teach other people, different is special. And so that's your superpower. And how special do you want to be? If you want to be able to, to leap tall build, buildings, you have to learn how to jump. And if you want to learn how to fly, you have to spread your wings in order to do so. But if you're grounded and you, you accept whatever you know is, is there for you, then you look for excuses to be less of 
of what you are than being more than what you can be. That is absolutely correct. And those are salient points. Now, as a kid, did you have a favorite book? I, I can't list one favorite book that, that, that I had a, a, as a kid. You know, I wasn't surrounded by people that read a lot of books. Um, um, academic wise, I was surrounded by people that read a lot of books and, and referred a lot of books to, to me. And like I said, it wasn't until the point that I got, I bought my first book, um, you know, um, Think and Grow Rich, um, Looking Out for Number One and How to Win Friends uh, and Influence People is probably my first purchases, is that um, I started to get a return on my investment. And that's the key thing for, for most people. When I say uh, reading, when I um, release my first, my first real book, uh, sprinkles the true spirit of Christmas. I had bought an author's copy and gave away 64 copies of my book to friends and family, and I signed it. Out of 64 uh, people, four people actually read my book and wrote a review, which is real important for authors to write a review once you've written it. The other 60 um, never read the book. They took the book, and that was that was it. And um, a matter of fact, four of the people that I worked with, when they left their work, left my books behind. So one thing I, I learned is the same way as my investment is that when you spend your own money on something, your return on your investment is a lot greater than what someone gives you. So it's just like the saying, you know, give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day. Right. And teach him how to fish, you know, you'll, you'll, uh, he'll eat for the rest of his life, but you still need a fishing reel. That is true. That is true. Okay. Now, now what are you reading these days or, what are you listening to? Because uh, I, I suspect, number one, you're really busy. So a lot of us do audiobooks as well as read. So what's on the radar for today? I, I do a co uh, um, compilation of, of both. When I'm driving, um, I'm listening to uh, either podcast or a book. The book that I'm listening to is a book by the name of Brian Tracy. Um, and it's called uh, Self-Discipline. The book that I'm uh, actually reading is by an author by the name of John D'Agostini. I just had him on my podcast of um, talking with Kevin and friends. If you want to watch that episode, go to RMK Productions and Network on my YouTube page and watch John's uh, interview. He talks about the um, uh, conversation of masculinity within men. He's one of the top 50 sought after con consultants and talk about men's behavior and how we fit into it because we struggle emotionally in order to talk about how we fit. And then we're constantly living a false stereotype of what men should be. And uh, it peels back the pages of um, emotionally spiritual um, and how our place is not only in um, the world, but in the, um, the space of being a, a father, husband, boyfriend, and good friends and brothers to other men. That is absolutely amazing. And so there are so much power with our words. And one of the things, especially for kids that struggle with reading, which is why I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad you're opening up and sharing with us some of your struggles, is that a lot of times they don't realize that there are other people out there struggling just like them. And if they can see someone like you, and you represent not only how you push through it, but how not only overcome it, but gone on to be really great and do some wonderful, amazing things, especially for the people in your area. Now, as a professional, how has reading or how has learning and reading helped you in your career? Well, the, the one thing you, you have to realize when a author puts pen to paper, um, every single book, no matter who wrote it, no matter how great it is, starts off the same way from the first sentence to the last sentence. Every single book is uh, structured the same way. It's on a piece of white paper with black letters. Um, the key thing with, with the book is that it shows you how to. Every single book shows you how to, how to ever overcome, you know, emotions, how to build a business, how to be a successful parent, how to be a good friend how to get in touch with your own own emotions, how to draw, how to write, how to write mu music or whatever, all of these things. It's a roadmap. 
It's a roadmap to a better you. So I, I, I would say to the, um, to the average person, if you don't know where you're going, if you don't know who you are, if you don't know where you've been, or you're questioning why you are in the situation you are, you're in right now, I would say the answer is always in a book. To my black people, I always say the best secret that you can keep from a black person is to put it in a book. Well, I heard that coming up. And since we're on the subject, do you think because at the time, especially here in America and during slavery, that black people weren't allowed to read, own books or write? Do you think that's one of the reasons we have that statement that I remember from a kid? Well, you, you have to understand it was against the law to educate a black person. So it was against the law to own a book. It was against the law in order to teach someone to read. It was against the law for you to tell someone you know how to read or, read or write. It was against the law. So our oppressors, you know, um, be it whatever European person you are and whatever the shade was, um, it was in fear of educating a person of what opportunities that were available to that person. So if you read, you had hope. Books help people every every single day. And so um, it, it was a system in order to oppress a group of people that have a lot more great, had a lot more greater power than they gave themselves the credit for. You know, it used to be a saying when I was growing up, a mind is a terrible thing to, to waste. My grandfather used to say the most powerful being, being on, a per, on the planet is a black person with an education. So and if you want, is, yeah. I'm gonna stop you right there. We gotta take a quick break. But you heard it. A man with that an education is the most dangerous man on the planet. All right, we're gonna be right back with Hi, I'm Michelle the Computer Lady, author and children's book publisher of the Mommy Readers Collection series of books. Well, we know how important it is for us to read, but we also know how important our public hospitals are. We're here in Atlanta. My public hospital is Grady. They saved my life. And I would like to give back, and I need your help to do so. I've created a new fundraiser called Building Towards Our Future. And what's going to happen is we're going to make sure, you and I together, that Grady keeps on serving the marginalized, the poor, and the indigent in the Atlanta metro area. All right. Stay tuned for more announcements. I'm going to be telling you how real soon. Thank you for joining me in this fight to make sure that we can live with Grady. Thank you for watching the Pick TV Network. Are you a company, business, or service that believes in social responsibility? Would you like to make a positive impact? You can. You can sponsor this program and be seen by 2 million viewers on the PIC TV network. Call 770-367-1268 for more information today. All right, we're back with the importance of power of reading. I have my guest today, Kevin McLemore, and he was telling us how so many times, especially back then, and I think it's even relevant today, that People that were oppressing us, they are scared of black people with intellect. Black people, the power is in reading, in, is in not only knowledge, but the execution of it, that knowledge. And we know that black excellence has always been around because, number one, black people have in over 50,000 inventions. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that we have patents on. That's not counting all the stuff that was stolen from us. But we're not going to go down that road. Kevin. Now, I've got to ask you, as a professional and the things that you've seen in your community, what's the state of reading liter literacy among our children, not only small children, but adolescents and adults in the United States? And what can we do to make it better? Well, I, I, I will tell you, the first thing we need to do um, is abolish the system that eliminates us access to our own history. 
we have states in, in our union that are trying to erase the truth of a horrible, horrible travesties that were done to a group of people, black people, um, to where they don't even, even happen. If you get rid of the books, you get rid of the stories, then in, in current day's mindset, those events never actually happen. Uh, we have to embrace our truth, be it the positive part of our history or the negative part of our history and allow history to be what it is. And then we have to embrace our consciousness and where we're at right now. Um, our school systems need to open the doors and have access to books that represent the stories of the children that they're educating. All right. Um, a lot of young black kids don't read books because, you know, none of the authors look like them. So when you, you look at the possibilities that when you said, as I, you know, I you struggled with this and that and whatever. And, um, you know, and when a young kid that's going through the same thing Kevin McLemore did, they had to go through and all of a sudden he's reading Kevin McLemore's book and says, I could be an author too. When you see someone overcome their struggles and they prevail, what does that do? That gives power to a young mind. It gives a person with a dream to bring it into reality. When you look at the, the top inventions of, of this world, you said you didn't want to go there, but I'm going to go there anyway. Not one of us can stop at a street light and look at those three different lights and basically says, you know, a black person that did that. You cannot go to a room in your house and flick on a light and you turn around and says, well, I know who um, invented the light. No, 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 no. The reason why the light stays on as long as you, you did, a former slave created the filament that allowed our life to be that way. If you look at the fact that every Super Bowl, one of the highest selling products are potato chips, guess who invented that? Black people. If you look at the fact that you enjoy peanut butter and jelly sandwich every now and then, and I so miss it since I've been vegan, guess what? That peanut butter came from a black person. And if you look for the fact that, you know, our country was built on the back of um, agriculture and um, textile when they were picking cotton, you know who created the cotton gin in order to do that? the slaves themselves. And there's so been so many inventions that because of a system that didn't allow blacks to have a patent that we had not been able to um, secure that other people have taken credit for. There's a lot of things that we enjoy today that were created by a black person. For those of us that are hiding and pre preparing for the apocalypse, that gas mask you, you, you just purchased invented by a black person. You know, Central Park, guess what that land used to be? It was taken away by the government from a black family. So you're from talking, actually a black enclave, as a matter of fact. You're exactly and so, right. And that's and that's the reason why I say we've got to understand and embrace our history, no matter positive or negative, and it's got to be shared with all. And for a young black person reading a book, when it, when it, when when you're able to realize what your own struggles are and how someone overcomes it. It's that it makes it that much easier to sit on your porch and read a book than to sit there on your porch and decide to do a drive by with somebody else. That is so, so true. And that's one of the reasons I like having these conversations, because this opens up not only parents, but children to the power of reading and knowing that you're diverse in this history, because you're talking about Garrett Morgan. He invented the light, uh, the strop light. He also invented the gas mask. And also for those kids that didn't know, the first car was invented by a black man. It wasn't Ford. He invented the first assembly line, but he didn't invent the first car. All right. Now, I see a lot of boys struggle reading, more so than I see girls. What do you think we can do to help our boys read more and better? I, I think they, they should have access to um, books that reflect what they're going through. And I think we should listen um, to young men and give them an opportunity to have access to books so they can choose to read. See, the, the thing is, you know, and I, we said this off camera, and I've said this before, um, most young men, black men, say, I hate reading. And I ask, why? What's the last book you've ever read? And they, go, they don't remember. I said, when you find a book that you love reading, you will find a love for reading because then you'll find other books that's like that. If you like motivational books, one of my good friends is Les Brown. You know, he started me off to reading um, motivational books. You know, 
Uh, I give credit to, you know, how to win friends and influence people, thinking, grow rich, looking for out for number one, the millionaire next door as my my reading. But what, what it made me fell in love when I saw a black author. That was one of the top motivational speakings. It made me fall in love with reading motivational books. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Because Les Brown is absolutely amazing. I have gotten to hear him speak. What a time is treasure for us. And he also says, and I quote, if you read a book a month, you'll be smarter than over 90% of the people in the world. That's the power of reading. Now, what guidance would you give parents? Because you're a parent, you have two boys and two girls to ensure that they're reading well and reading more often. I, I would say to any new parents, and, and, and this is the struggle I have with parents, is, is because, um, especially in the black community, we have far too many children having children. And so the education um, system, we have failed our own system because we, we became totally responsible for another life before we even made a life for ourselves. But the one thing that I would say to any parent, no matter what age you are, the first two years of a child's life is so critical. Read to them daily, often. Read to them daily and often because everything that happens to you in life has a rhythm to it. And if rhythm, if reading to a child has a rhythm, when a child starts to read, they will start to dance to that beat of their own song. Wow. I felt that all in my heart and it's absolutely true. And even if you're when you're pregnant, if you're reading to that baby inside, they're going to have that emotional attachment and also model. Make sure that the kids see you read, pick up a book, a newspaper, a magazine, a comic book, even and share it and share that joy with your children. So those are very, very optimal points that you brought up, Kevin. Now, we know about STEM, science, technology, engineering and math, because, you know, that's what I specialize in. And we know how important STEM is in education. What can we do to help our children learn science, technology, engineering, and math as they go along their reading journal so they can be elevated to learn these types of processes and procedures? I think the first thing we need to do is that we need to understand that a space is wide open and that's available to us. We need to go out and, and seek resources that will allow us to be competitive on that platform. There are a lot of historically black colleges now that are getting funding in order to grow that program. Um, some of your bigger schools and whatever does not um, provide, or we have financial resources to attend that. The earlier we can get this involved um, and incorporate it and get a baseline assessment in our early childhood learning, the more successful we will be as young people going into this next uh, century coming forward. It has to start early and we have to have access and resources in order for our kids to learn on the same level as the other kids and throughout our, uh, the world that are more, a lot more advanced at a much earlier age. It has to be a priority um, within our education system. It has to be. Well, Kevin, that's absolutely correct. Now, as a father of four and, you know, your past struggles with reading or not so much reading, but that you had a disability, how did you ensure that your children read well and got the help they needed if they also struggled? Well, I, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I have to be fully transparent. It wasn't me. Um, it was their mother. Their mother is a very successful uh, attorney. Um, she consumed... Um, um, books like it was Kool-Aid and you were one of 13 kids. You only got one, one serving. Um, she read to my kids every single night. I struggled when I read. It was stressful for, for me. Um, and I watched her. You know, she would come home with those Tom Gershon books and whatever, Stephen King books and all the Harry Potters and would read every night. I would read, but it was hard for me to, to read. because I Like I said, I wasn't diagnosed until I was in my 50s. I'm 64 now. So um, my oldest child is 42, my youngest is 22. 
So if you, you do the math, she carried a lot of the weight. I watched on the sideline and supported her. I cannot take credit for the gift she gave my, my kids. And my kids are all, all brilliant. Well, it, not even taking credit. The thing about it is when we realize we have a partner and they realize our struggles and you work together because just because that was an area that she, you, she was shining in, she didn't diminish your shine because you were there supporting her like a husband and a wife, they do and they should do. And so, yes, you are still part of it. And you still read, even if you didn't read aloud, they saw you reading, they saw you with a book. And that's so important. And I want all the fathers out there to know, if you're struggling, don't worry about the struggle. Pick up a book anyway and let a child see, mirror it. They need I, to see you with that book in your hand. And I, I, I agree. And that's the whole difference in, in, in partnership, even though she's my ex-wife now, is that one of the things that, and she bought me books. She bought me books that I like, you know, bought me the, the history of um, Porsche. She bought me the, the, the book Millionaire, ne Millionaire Next Door. Um, I'm, she probably bought me all the Les Brown's books even though I was personal friends with him. So, um, yeah, you you got you to gotta have a good supportive team. And if you don't have a parent in the house um, that reads, put your child in a system or surround them with people that can supply them with the needs, that, um, the requirements of what they need. Um, you, just because you fall short, it doesn't mean that um, you can't put your kids. Just because you can't ride a bike, it's okay if your neighbor teaches them how to ride a bike, as long as they learn to ride, as long as they learn to, to read, as long as they learn, you know, that's what tutors are for. You know, we need good teachers to be in the, in the system that care about your child. And we need teachers that will teach the ones that struggle instead of putting them inside in special ed courses. I mean, they wanted to put me in special ed courses. My parents refused it. And I think that's the best thing that my parents did because they made me fight for what I had to learn. Well, right that forward. is amazing. You had awesome parents. And Kevin, wow, the time goes so fast. Thank you for coming on here and sharing with us the importance and power of reading, how you overcame your struggles, and how you have elevated yourself to greatness, along with the support of your family and raised some great, amazing children. Kevin, it is a privilege and an honor for me to know you. And I thank you for joining me on this segment of the importance and power of reading. Thank you for having me. And uh, I hope someone takes a little bit of this and applies it because a little bit goes a long way. That is absolutely correct. Now, everyone, as you heard, you don't have to be the most spectacular reader, the most great reader. You don't have to even love reading, but you have to learn the importance and the power behind it. And that's what my friend Kevin McLemore did. He's elevated himself even with his struggle. And you can too if you're out there struggling. So parents, take the time. We will have this on a replay. Show this to your son or daughter if they're struggling. And get help and make sure that they know about the importance and power of reading. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Michelle, the Computer Lady, and we'll see you next time. I'm Michelle, the computer lady, the host for the importance and power of reading. We're going to have some great guests on Dr. Hudson from Jackson State University, Moses West from the Moses West Foundation, Gina Gadsden, and so many more. And we're going to talk to you about the importance and power of reading and how we can get our kids to read more. Come join me on the PIC TV network.